This is a typical Bennett fracture with a large ulnopalmar fragment. By opening the fracture, the involvement of the joint becomes clearly visible. The fracture is to be repaired with two lag screws to make it exercise stable. The approach over the radial base of the metacarpal one is marked here as a longitudinal incision. The anatomical preparation of the approach is demonstrated on a cadaver hand. The radial longitudinal incision over the base of the metacarpal one is extended in the proximal direction beyond the saddle joint. A hook is used to retract the skin soft tissue mantle in the dorsal direction. The thenar musculature is now visible. The musculature can be pushed in the palmar direction with the periosteal elevator. The dissection is completed near the base in the direction of the joint capsule with the scalpel. A Kirschner wire is used to mark the saddle joint. The joint capsule is opened with the scalpel. When doing this, care must be taken not to detach the stabilizing ligaments from the Bennett's fragment. The rotation of the metacarpal one and the manipulations with the periosteal elevator will open up the fracture and thus reveal the involvement of the joint from palmar. The approach is marked on the model. The longitudinal incision is performed as planned. Blunt hooks are used. They spread the soft tissue mantle apart. The thenar musculature is removed with a scalpel in the palmar direction. After repositioning the hook, the base of the metacarpal one becomes visible. Now there's a good view of the base of the metacarpal one and the saddle joint. The periosteum is split with the scalpel and retracted in the dorsal and the palmar directions. After exposure of the fracture, the Bennett's fragment can be moved aside with tweezers. The fragment is then reduced and held with the small reduction forceps, producing a smooth, articular surface. For the planned inside-out method, the small reduction forceps is removed. After a wound spreader has been applied, the Bennett's fragment is folded over with a sharp hook. The first gliding hole is now drilled with a 2 mm drill bit beginning at the fracture surface and aiming in the dorsoradial direction at a 90 degree angle to the fracture surface. The second gliding hole is drilled distal to the first one in the same manner. The Bennett's fragment can now be reduced and stabilized with the small reduction forceps. The reduced articular surface is again checked for smoothness. Pronation of the metacarpal one will first expose the superficial branch of the radial nerve and then the dorsal exit points of both gliding holes.
the 1.5 mm drill guide is inserted into the distal gliding hole, and the 1.5 mm thread hole is drilled along the same axis into the Bennett's fragment. With the countersink, the space for the screw head is cut out. The depth is measured. A self-tapping 2 mm screw is inserted as a lag screw. The second lag screw is inserted in the proximal hole. Because of the cancellous bone structure here, countersinking is not necessary. Tightening of both screws will apply good compression to the fracture. The reduction forceps can be removed. By turning the metacarpal one back into place, the tips of both screws become visible. They protrude from the far cortex by one to two turns of the thread. The reduced articular surface is smooth.